Hi everyone! What if I told you that you can analyze competitors' prices, find trendy topics for articles, and even create product feeds for ads by yourself, without any help from developers or high-priced services? In this video, I will show you how to fulfill these tasks using only copy, paste, and a pig spider. Let's start! To put it simply, treat scraping as collection of data. In our case, we get data from website pages, such as prices, links to images, product details, reviews, and many more, by several types of conditions that we can add to the scraping settings inside of the tool. We have four types of scraping conditions. The first one is contain search. It's the simplest way to see if certain content appears on a web page or not. For example, you can use it for double checking after you have uploaded SEO tags or installed Google Analytics code on your website. Then we have XPath and CSS selectors. Using expressions of these languages, you can set directions that crawlers should follow to gather necessary data. For example, following this XPath, crawler will collect all links to images, following the second one it will get the prices. To get the necessary directions, open the browser, then inspect the element that you want to scrape and copy its, for example, selector or xpath to the tool. Straight to the scraping settings, it will look like this. Then choose xpath and that's it. Of course, I understand that it may look a bit tricky at this point, but trust me, the more practice you have, the easier it will be for you. And also, I will show a lot of examples how to use it in this video. And the last type is regular expressions. It's a sequence of characters that describes the template of the text you search for. For example, using this template, we can get links to from breadcrumbs on the site that I'm going to crawl today. By the way, if you're an experienced Regex user, go ahead and share the most complex one you have ever used. Let's show how agile and all-purpose this approach can be. Uh, and that's it. When we are done with the settings, click OK to enable them, then double-check if all parameters turned on, and we can start the crawling by pressing the Start button. That's pretty much it about setting up the crawling. Before explaining the most popular and useful scraping examples for e-commerce, blog, and other websites, I want to remind you that you can ask any questions in comments below or during an online demo of our tools that you can book following the link in the video description. My colleague will show you the functionality of our programs and answer all your questions personally. And if you enjoyed this video, I would be happy to see you clicking the like button and subscribing to our channel. I just want to be appreciated! When talking about e-commerce websites, the most common use cases are scraping of product details and searching for thin content pages, such as categories with low number of items. Let's dig into both of them. To detect Thin content pages, we have to find a piece of code or a specific tag that is responsible for displaying one item on a page, and then double check how many times it appears in a source code. It must be the same number as the number of items on a page. So, to find this tag, open the inspect tool for a specific element on the web page, so it's like one plate, uh, then find out if it appears exactly the same number of times as number of items on the page. Here I can see that it's six times, uh, but it's, the sa it's difference because here it goes for a tag and here for span tag, so I should double check in source code. And if it goes with span tag, yes, it's only three in source code, so we can use it for scraping. So I need to add the following direction to the scraping settings, it's xpath uh, that is going to scrape the inner text of span tag with mini product page product name value of data selenium attribute. 
and when it's added to the settings, click on OK, double check if necessary parameter turned on, and click on Start button. As you can see, I have already crawled several pages on this website, so the only thing I need to do in order to find thin content pages is sort the data by this column, or I can use filter. For example, show me all categories with less than five products on a page. And that's it, the only thing I need to do to find thin content pages uh, on e-commerce website. Another case of using scraping for e-commerce is collecting product details. It may come in handy when creating feeds for your Google Ads, analyzing competitors, or when you want to get a complete list of products that you sell in a spreadsheet format, but your CMS is throwing a tantrum or developer has a day off. So today let's try to scrape several parameters of products uh, on the same website. For example, it will be prices, number of reviews, and image URLs. As always, we need to open Inspect tool for a specific element. And here I can see that to get price, I have to scrape inner text of div tag with price in price value of data selenium attribute. So that's the direction that I will add to the scraper. Uh, div, open the brackets, data selenium equal to price in price, inner text, and CSS selector. Then I want to scrape images, for example. Inspect tag IMG with data selenium attribute of value inline media main image. And the same I will add to the tool. As you can see, I use both CSS selectors and XPaths just to show you that it's a like, all purpose uh, tool that you can use any way that you want or you know how. And also I want to mention that here I will scrape not the inner text, but the value of source attribute of this tag. Okay, then the same for number of reviews. I will span the span with reviews number value of data selenium attribute. And also I can scrape even availability if it appears on the web page. Okay, when all uh, scraping conditions are set, click on OK, double check if scraping parameters turned on and you can start the crawling. The same, I have already crawled several pages, so I can show you the results. Uh, open the scraping tab of reports in a sidebar, then click on show all results, and we have a well-structured table, actually, with all the data from pages, like prices, number of reviews and availability, and images. Uh, all the other columns I will explain a little bit later. Uh, that's it. It's a well-structured table that you can use uh, for any of your needs uh, and it's much faster than you would ask any developers or use maybe high price services. Uh, it's all available in standard version of Nitpick Spider. I almost forgot to mention how to export this report. You need to click on Export button and here you can choose which report do you want to get. You can either export only this current table using the first option here or you can get even a full uh, report with the scraping data and also the SEO parameters that you collected during the crawl. So uh, if you want to get the biggest one just get scraping data and all results in a single file. Yep that's it and let's move on. Scraping will be useful for a wide range of marketers and bloggers that are primarily work with creating a content. For example, it may come in handy for competitor analysis and search for trendy topics. If you scrape number of shares, reads, comments, and so on, you can get both uh, the most engaging and the most popular content. So here are the conditions that I used for scraping reads, shares, and publishing date, category, and so on. And as always, I have already crawled several pages of Search Engine Journal, so we can get all the results quickly. Uh, you get a well-structured table that you can analyze to quickly understand what should you write for your project next and get the best results on your website. And another not that obvious scraping use case is searching for unusual spelling mistakes. 
For example, try a regular expression with the most frequent typos of your brand name to make sure you have none of them on your website and subdomains. This feature comes into play when our building and spell check doesn't perfectly fit. For example, in typos of your brand name or wrong usage of punctuation. And I recommend running these little checks at least maybe once in a month in a case if you upload a lot of content on your website. Since this video should be both understandable for beginners, but at the same time quite an in-depth one, I want to explain to you what I call the last bus of scraping. Well, actually it's not the most difficult scraping case in my life, but still quite a tough one. We are going to combine XPath access and functions. So let's try to scrape only specific product details uh, on this website. As always, open the inspect tool and let's find out how to scrape on the lens mount type and uh, size of the sensor and maybe other product details uh, in a well-structured way. I can see that they use table tag to display this information and we don't have a unique identifier of value for lens mount. So, let me show you what direction should we use in order to scrape this data. As far as we cannot use any unique identifiers of these tags, I opted for directions based on inner text of the tags. So, we have to apply text function. So, uh, here is the condition that will help us to scrape lens mount value. It may look scary for a bit, but let's take a deeper look and uh, I will explain how it works. So, uh, it's better to read it from the end. We are scraping the following sibling of the TD tag with inner text lens mount that is located inside of the TR tag, which, which is also located inside of the table tag with specs item group table value of data selenium attribute. Yeah, still, uh, not, it's still quite a difficult to understand from the first time, but it's like breadcrumbs. You're looking from the very beginning to the end. And the same for other product details. I just need to replace lens mount with another product details like sensor size, recording limit, or focus mode. And this is the way how you can create a well-structured table with the only necessary product details. As I told you before, uh, I, I already scraped uh, the results, so let me show you how it looks like. We got all the previous product details like prices, number of reviews, availability, and images, and at the end we have this uh, columns with lens mounts, sensor sizes, and recording limits. By the way, don't forget to learn more about scraping conditions using XPath, CSS selectors, and regular expressions, as they may help you a lot with solving tasks much more faster. I often compare scraping to formulas in spreadsheets because if you don't know how to use them, it takes a lot of time to collect and find necessary data. In the video description, I have listed a bunch of articles about scraping that will lead you through the darkness of XPath and regular expressions. But also, make sure to click on a link in the video description to book a demo of our tools to hone your scraping skills with the big spider. Thanks a lot for watching, like and subscribe if you find this video useful and wishing you a great rankings and a lot of traffic. Bye-bye.